I had run out of water. I passed out onto the sand. There was a seagull that flew over me. And there was this moment of connection where the seagull locked eyes with me. I saw myself through the bird's perspective, looking back at myself, dying on the sand. I am that bird, and that bird is me. That's where I began to not fear death. I find that in a lot of indigenous communities and tribes, they tend to move with flow. Flow is essentially a state of being in which you are in rhythm with your surroundings. But also within rhythm of your own self. I believe that in the Western world, we tend to do the opposite. I was born in the Turks and Caicos Islands, but I moved to Germany as a young kid. So I'm a product of two complete opposite cultures. Relaxation meets structure. I moved to Canada in my teens, and I was a complete stranger. I turned to track and field because it's something I really excelled in. And it also became my passion. I was competing at the top levels for my birth country. But when they couldn't fund the team anymore, everything I had worked so hard towards had completely vanished. I gave into the pressures of society. I started a business, became a trainer, but something was still missing. I was becoming very depressed and I didn't understand why. I started walking in nature for one hour, two hours, three hours, just to clear my head. I thought to myself, while I'm working this great job and I have this beautiful place, why am I still upset? You know, what is it that I really love to do? There are people who are solo walking around the world and I was really inspired by them. I essentially just quit everything. I decided, okay, I have to absolutely do this. I'm going to walk the length of Africa. A lot of the things that I learned in Africa had to do with how hospitable human beings were. On the roads, when I was walking, everywhere you go, even if it's a complete stranger, even if they're scared of you, they would just give you a cup of tea, whatever food they have. They were so proud to be kind. The young Maasai men do a sort of mating dance in a way to show their strength to attract a bride. One cannot exist without the other. This is the Ubuntu way, all for one and one for all. And that is to share everything amongst each other within their own society. I ended up joining a few of the Maasai men who go on these walkabouts. I was walking from Tanzania to Kenya, but the Maasai just ended up walking through the border without going through the checks, without doing any of the, uh, the passports. Because the idea of having borders doesn't exist in traditional Africa. It's a man-made concept. When an astronaut goes out into space and they look down at Earth, they see Earth as one giant blue marble. And that's a thing that, until I die, that's what I want to share with the world. Just by being with nature, you're falling in line with the energy of everything that's going around you. I am that bird, and that bird is me. 
we are all interconnected. What I do is, I go to unique places that are hard to reach, with populations that don't necessarily have the voice to express themselves. The more I involve myself in expeditions and share it with the world, the more I want to do bigger expeditions that inspire more people. Stories that change and impact people's lives for the better. I learn all kinds of wisdom from the people and animals I meet on my travels. This is our Hawutli, all of our territory, and we fought for that. Huge corporations, you know, fish farms. But sooner or later, we've got to realize that wealth isn't money. Wealth is what we have in our oceans, what we have in our woods, mm -hmm. on land. I'm not doing it for myself, I'm doing it for the next seven generations. You don't need to dive into the water. You can start shallow and move your way up. Take small steps. Start with small programs. Start with small projects. Go on a trip that initially would have scared you. I feel at peace doing these things. I'm just more happy than I used to be. I'm more free than I used to be. And I feel like I am me. Now you might be asking, how did I survive the situation? I wanted to keep living, and I know that I could experience life in many different ways. I wanted to keep moving forward because I wanted to keep experiencing this way of life. No matter what happens, you are a part of whatever is around you and inside of you. Nothing is separate. Once you get to that state of understanding and being, then life is a beautiful ride.